So far, our examples have been quite clean in the fact that acquisitions have happened at the beginning of the financial year. But that doesn't have to happen, of course. Uh, and this example, we see that the parent acquires the subsidiary on the 1st of September 2011, yet the uh, accounts are running from January to December, so the acquisition happens in the middle of the year. So let's run through this example and see what we have to do to make those adjustments or to how to adjust for that. Uh, we start off with the um, goodwill as always. Uh, contribution of the parent is very easy. Here it is. It's in their balance sheet, 21,000. Contribution from the NCI, uh, this is given in the question, 7,000. Uh, 7,000. Now, what did they buy for their uh, contribution? Well, they bought the equity shares of 10,000. They bought the share premium, which was in the uh, accounts of the subsidiary at the time. And they uh, bought the retained earnings at the date of acquisition. Now, this is where we need to make it a, a small adjustment. How do we calculate this? Well, there's uh, let's look at what we've been given. We've got the retained earnings at the beginning of the year was 4,000. This is 31st of the 12th, uh, end of the year, beginning of the year. Uh, and we've made 12,000, or the subsidiary has made 12,000 during the current year, 2011. So what we do is we simply assume that that profit was made equally in every month. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, let's see, the 1st of September was the date of the acquisition. So after eight trading months, we're going to assume that we've made eight twelfths of this profit. It's a simple pro rata. So let's do a quick working up here to show that. Retained earnings at date of acquisition. So we can bring in the retained earnings from the previous year is very simply the amount given in the question, 4,000. And the profit for, uh, well, profit at date of acquisition is actually eight months out of 12 months times the profit for the whole year. So that's 16,000, sorry, 12,000. So we can just do a quick calculation, plus eight divided by 12 times 12,000 gives us 8,000 for that figure. Add those together and that gives us 12,000 in retained earnings uh, as of the date of acquisition. And we can use that figure just here, plus 12,000. Uh, and we can see here our contribution was 21 plus 7, so that's 28,000. And the assets they've purchased, 10 plus 6 is 16, plus 12, that's 28. So there's no goodwill at all in this question. The contribution is exactly the same as the assets purchased, so no goodwill. So let's just uh, review that little question, uh, make this neater so we can see what's going on. We added the retained earnings that we'd been given for the previous year, which was 4,000, and we prorated profit for the current year with the assumption that the profits were equally spaced uh, throughout the year and that might not happen if it's a very seasonable bit seasonable seasonable seasonal business um, but we just make that assumption for now and that gives us a retained earnings at the date of acquisition of 12,000 leaving no goodwill okay so uh, on to retained earnings this is our second standard working uh, very standard post act profits of the parent is uh, 60, uh, where are we? Uh, it's 50 plus 55. P 
post act profits for the subsidiary is 4 plus 12. This is all year end stuff. Less the pre act profits for the subsidiary, which we've already done uh, 12,000 there. In fact, I'll just make that negative. which is 4,000, which is what we were expecting. It's the remainder of the last four months to give us this 12. So 8 twelfths gave us 8, 4 twelfths is going to give us 4. So that's no surprise, that figure there. Uh, and then we want our 75% share. So 75% of 4 times 0 0.75 is, of course, 3,000. Add that to our the parents' own post-acquisition profits, uh, or the total uh, retained earnings. Fifty-five plus three is fifty-eight. So that's that figure done. One more to do. Uh, it's just the NCI amount. The original contribution. All oh, that was given to us in the question. So that's seven thousand there. And the NCI wants the remainder of this 4,000 profit. So it's going to be 4,000 times 0.25 is 1,000, no surprises there. Gives us a total of 8,000 for the NCI figure. So we can put all this now into the statement of financial position. Goodwill, well, there wasn't any. Uh, we know that. Uh, investment in the subsidiary is ignored. We'll put that in there. Other assets, that's simply parent plus the subsidiary. It's very standard calculations. It gives us a total assets of 99,000. Uh, equity shares, 10,000, just the parent only. P only. Uh, share premium we ignore. Uh, retained earnings for the year. Well, let's put it there. Uh, uh, retained earnings. Uh, we have a figure for that. It's this 58,000 just here. The NCI figure, we have a figure for that. 8,000 gives us uh, 76 in the equity section and then the liabilities 21 plus 2 is 99 and luckily or not luckily nicely the balance sheet ma matches so we've got 99,000 here for total assets and we've got 99,000 here for equity plus liabilities. So that's the uh, balance sheet matching. So let's just quickly review what we've had to do here. The main issue with this question was the mid-year acquisition. So we've had to pro-rata the profits to give us a uh, retained earnings at the date of acquisition. And then we've just used that figure uh, throughout the normal calculations that we've done many times before. So uh, we counted out the months. It's the 1st of September, which gives us eight trading months. So eight twelfths of the reported profit for the year, which was 12,000, gives us the 8,000 figure, uh, giving us a total retained earnings, which was 12,000. Uh, we calculated goodwill in the standard way. Uh, we had a share premium account to consider, and we just put that in as an asset that was purchased. Um, no goodwill, uh, and then retained earnings and the NCI contribution and percent of the profits uh, was calculated in the standard way. Uh, no other questions there. So that's the consolidated STAS statement of financial position with a mid-year acquisition.